Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Singularity. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. It's fantastic to have you here. Aren't we living in some incredibly exciting times? Now finally, Toyota, the world's largest automaker, has gotten off their bottoms, recognized the fact that hydrogen is not the future in passenger cars, which clearly it is not, baffling from a company that invested in Tesla almost a decade ago. And if they had have kept their investment in Tesla, it would have been worth more than what Toyota is worth now. Just think about that for a minute. Anyway, not too long ago, around about a year and a half ago, Toyota entered into a JV with the second most successful electric car company and software company and battery company on the planet. Yep, you guessed it. It's BYD. Did you guess it? Let me know in the comments. Now, Toyota has secretly been working with BYD to bring us the new Toyota BZ4X. I think it's a bit of a mouthful, BZ4X. I'm not really sure where they're going with that, but it looks good. I've got to say, it looks a lot like a Lexus, but I think maybe even better than the current models that they have with Lexus. Now, this new Toyota BZ4X won't really be a full Toyota. It's a little bit like the way that the Subaru BRZ and the Toyota 86 are neither Toyota or Subaru, but an amalgamation of both companies. Now, the battery pack, powertrain, motors, and much of the engineering that will go into the car is actually coming from BYD. And I think that's a very good decision on Toyota's part. BYD will use the blade battery in Toyota's car, or I should Toyota, I should say Toyota will use the blade battery in the BZ4X. And the blade battery is known for its low cost, its inability to catch fire, which is a huge benefit, and for its ability to not lose capacity after more than 3,000 charging cycles, meaning that it will be a 1 million kilometer plus EV car. The car will fall to, pe fall to pieces, in my view, before you need to replace the battery. And at that point, you could use the battery for any number of applications. So, good decision by Toyota to partner with BYD. Even though it appeared that Toyota had been doing almost nothing in the EV space, they had quietly behind the scenes been working with BYD, which was a good decision, like I said. Now, Toyota is poised to enter the electric vehicle segment in 2022 with the BZ4X crossover. It boasts edgy styling that sets it apart from Toyota's petrol-powered SUVs. Unlike the last all-electric vehicle from the company, the RAV4 EV, the BZ4X, or maybe I should say the BZ4 Cross, will be sold at Toyota dealerships nationwide. That includes the United States and also globally. Now, obviously, battery supply is still going to be a huge problem. It is for every automaker in the world, let's be frank, including Tesla. So Toyota will obviously struggle for several years to meet demand. If you're interested in one of these, I'd be calling your Toyota dealership up or emailing Toyota and trying to get on the reservation list as soon as you can. Now, although only the BZ4 Cross has been announced so far, Toyota has recorded several trademark filings using other BZ names, which means obviously the company is going to release a range of different EVs over the coming months. The production version of the BZ4 Cross is expected to hit Toyota showrooms in mid-2022 in the United States and also in Japan. After that, it will also enter the European market and other markets, hopefully in Australia, but I'm not, holding, I'm not confident that it will do so. But eventually, of course, we'll also get EVs here in Australia too. Now, when it does, it will join a growing group of non-luxury EV SUVs, which includes the Chevrolet Bolt, EUV, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Hyundai Kona Electric, the Kia Nero EV, the Tesla Model Y, 
and the Volkswagen ID4. Now this new vehicle is a completely new vehicle built from the ground up and it's expected to cost in its base model LE form 37,000 US dollars around about in mid spec $39,000 around about and limited high high spec model will cost 42,000. Now I think these prices that we're hearing are probably a little on the low side. It's more likely to be probably $5,000 more across the board. However, remember in different countries there's different incentives that will bring those prices down. And also the price is actually quite close to its petrol counterpart. So it's very competitively, competitively priced, even if the price is $5,000 more, I think the price is still on the money. Now those prices don't come directly from Tesla, they're estimates from the market, from a range of sources. So we don't know exactly what they're going to be. But when we know more about pricing, features and options and trims, I'll update this video with a new video and provide all of that information. What about engine transmission and performance? While Toyota hasn't released much information yet about the BZ4 Cross's powertrain, except that it will come with all-wheel drive as standard, so obviously it will have at minimum a motor at the front and a motor at the back. Obviously we'll know more about the powertrains they'll be using as it comes closer to release date. But remember, this, these components, the battery, the motors, is coming from BYD. So, we can have a look at the BYD Tang to get an idea of the performance and battery capacity. Guys, if you're interested in that, see my video on, BYD, on the BYD Tang. It's on the channel. And I give you in that video some details and specs on the performance of that vehicle. And I think it's very likely those exact numbers will apply, or almost exactly, to this Toyota EV. One thing I'll tell you is the BYD. Tang, in its top spec form, does 0 to 60 miles per hour, 0 to 100, in a very fast 4.4 seconds. So Toyota may have an exciting car on their hands with this new crossover EV. I'm excited to see just how fast it's going to be. Now what about interior comfort and interior specifications? Well, we don't know exactly what those are going to be, but obviously we do have some photos. And from those photos, we can see that the BZ4 Cross will offer a more futuristic dashboard design than other Toyota models, which isn't hard to do, with a digital gauge display, a large infotainment touchscreen, and a wide center console between the two front seats. The cabin looks quite spacious, which makes sense because it's an EV, and it looks similar in size to the RAV4. But we don't know how accommodating it is until we get a chance to see it in the flesh. Likely though, obviously it won't need a transmission tunnel. I don't think Toyota will use a transmission. BYD doesn't. Therefore, it's highly unlikely you'll see a transmission in this vehicle. And obviously removing the transmission is a good thing. It obviously, it's one less part to break, but also it means that there's no transmission tunnel in the car, which frees up more space in the car. So interior packaging for EVs can actually often release a lot more space inside. If you look at the Tesla Model Y, it doesn't look like a very big car. It kind of looks like a, an oversized hatchback. But the interior specifications are actually very, very spacious. Expect to see something similar from this Toyota EV. Guys, honestly, I've been extremely disappointed with the way Toyota has focused on electric mobility. They have basically done it a disservice. Let's be honest. They started off so well with the Prius. And for so long, they pushed the Prius. And that was a great, a great first step for the market to start experiencing the concept of having a battery in a car. It worked well and they sold them en masse and it, and it was a good move from Toyota. But since that point, Toyota has just gone downhill making bad decision after bad decision. Until, of course, recently with this JV with BYD, which like I said, was a very good decision. But before that point, the CEO of Toyota had claimed that EVs are not the future, hydrogen is the future, and EVs are never going to work, no one's going to adopt them. In fact, he stuck to that message for years, even though almost everyone in the industry disagreed, and he has, as recently as several months ago, still claimed that to be facts. Obviously, if you're an engineer, you know better than that. Times have changed. Technology has changed. 
and the market has completely accepted the fact that hydrogen is not the future for passenger vehicles and ele electrification is. Now hopefully Toyota pivots, forgets about its efforts with hydrogen for passenger cars, I'm sure they might work in trucks but not in passenger cars, and starts focusing more on electrifying their fleet. If they do not, Toyota may also be at risk of going bankrupt the same way that Ford and BMW are because neither of those companies have planned for full electrification by 2030, which is why the market is going, no question about it. If they don't do it, others will. Others will feel the need of the market, such as BYD, newcomers from China. Doesn't matter who they are, they'll feel that need. If Toyota doesn't provide the EVs people want, somebody else will. You can guarantee that. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And guys, remember the BYD Tang video. You can check it out. It'll be in the link below in the description. Go have a look at that and you'll see a lot of the specs of what I believe will be this new Toyota EV. Bye-bye.